In this tutorial, we're going to go through some methods to fit uh, approximations to higher order systems with um, a lower order or first order plus dead time model. So just come to the um, apmonitor.com website slash PDC for process dynamics and control. And the one that we're going to be going through right here is um, FOPDT optimization fit. So first order plus dead time um, you know, with optimization methods. So there's our first order uh, linear system. And we have three unknown parameters, kp, tau p, and theta p. Now this model uh, does a very good job with many um, dynamic systems. Um, and so we can use this as a kind of a starting point to characterize our either higher order system or data, and then be able to fit uh, PID tuning parameters. OK, so um, here's some some code. I just want to kind of walk through it um, to explain it in a little bit more detail. But you can see in the uh, the blue there is the initial guess. So that may, may have come from something like a graphical method or just knowledge about the process. How long it's going to take, uh, how much dead time there might be. And if you want to cover uh, some more about the uh, graphical method, just come here on the right and there it shows the seven steps for the graphical method with a little video there as well. Okay, but we want to use optimization now. We want, don't want to have to use, um, you know, maybe we don't have a clean uh, step data. Maybe the inputs are moving up and down. Um, and we don't, we can't identify a period where there's a, a clean step, for example. Uh, so optimization helps us do this. Helps us minimize a sum of squared errors between, um, you know, something like this. Uh, so let me go ahead and copy this. And I'll go ahead and open, um, okay, go ahead and paste this in here. So, so let me explain this just a little bit um, uh, first before we uh, get into the code. Um, what we're doing is um, we're essentially evaluating um, every time point here, okay? We have data. Um, now, in this case, it came in every second. And then we compare it with, uh, you know, this is our initial guess. Um, Right here, this blue line is our initial guess of a first order plus dead time model. And we look at each point and uh, we evaluate an error there. So we might have a y model minus y uh, predicted or measured, um, and then we might square that. And for each one of these points, uh, okay, so we'll add all of these up. We'll just do a summation here. Uh, we'll just add those up. So that's going to become our objective. We're going to try to minimize uh, this objective right here uh, to try to get these two to uh, line up. Okay, so you can either do guess and check. Okay, we only have three parameters, kp, tau p, and theta p for our um, FOPDT model. So you can just kind of guess and check those. Or you can use an optimizer to um, more intelligently guess those values for you. Okay, to try to minimize uh, this objective function. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing here. All right, so um, coming back uh, here, here's some source code. Um, let's just go ahead and walk through this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, yeah, you can get the code here at the bottom. Just go ahead and select Get Code, um, and that'll help you download it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just going to go ahead and run this uh, first, and then uh, just show the plot. Okay, so it has an initial sum of squared error objective. So it evaluated our initial guess. And then it's going to try to use optimization to improve upon that. Okay, and then once it finishes, then it's going to have a final sum of squared error objective. And then our results. Okay, so our initial sum of squared errors was about 6.9. And it tried to minimize that. And so our final was about 0.3. So you can see the red line versus the um, blue line there. Uh, is our fit to the black line. Okay, so it improved uh, quite a bit. Um, let's go open this up, um, maybe in another environment that helps us, uh, you know, analyze this in a little bit more depth, which is going to be Spider, which is uh, part of the Anaconda package. Um, so this is um, Spider with Python 3.5. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, close this one, go ahead and open it up from my desktop. Okay, and then let's just go ahead and um, walk through this. So uh, the first thing I do in this section, let me make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it, um, is I go ahead and just import some of these packages I'm going to need. The first one is just NumPy. 
um, you know, standard one, matplotlib for plotting. Uh, so this one's kind of like the you know numerical analysis toolbox uh, module. This one's a plotting one, and then I have a couple uh, you know the few of these SciPy um, scientific Python packages like integrate, optimize, and interpolate. And I'll show you where I need those in in uh, down below. Okay, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and define my process model. Now, if you have data, you can just go ahead and remove this, and uh, you don't need to uh, simulate a process model. So that black curve that we had. Um, if you already have the data points, you don't need this section. You can go ahead and remove it. Okay, this is our FOPDT model. Okay, this is our approximation to the data or to the model. And so I'm just defining a function that will return the derivatives that we can integrate and uh, and be able to um, you know be able to to look at the FOPDT prediction. Okay, now here is where I set up my inputs. Now, as you saw from that plot, okay, let me come back here. And I'll just go ahead and put this off kind of to the side. Okay, so as you saw from this plot, um, we had the bottom section of that plot was just a step up to 1 and then down to 0.1 and then back up to about 0.5. So you can see that right here. Um, you know, with this, uh, this I, I step up to 1 at uh, the fifth uh, time point, um, down to 0.1 and then to 0.5. So I'm just constructing a set of inputs. Um, now, if you have data, you'll likely have your output, your input, and your time points, and so you also won't need this as well. Um, one of the things that I need for um, for the uh, time delay is to just interpolate between all of those U values. So I, I create a 1D, a linear interpolation uh, between my time and my U values, so I can access any point in between there as well. Let me go ahead and run this up to this breakpoint, and I'll just show you what I mean by that. Okay, so it's going to run, and then if I run this line, okay, then I have my UF. Okay, so U um, is is going to be um, just that uh, vector that I constructed of uh, 0, 1, to 0.1, to 0.5. Okay, um, and then my time, okay, those are my time values as well, just linearly spaced between 0 and 40. And uh, but let's say I want to have you at instead of one of these time points, I want to have it at 0 0.4. Okay, I, I got to um, interpolate now, and so I can do uf of 0 0.4, and that's going to be equal to zero. So if I print uf 0 0.4, okay, that's going to be give me zero. And if I um, print uf, let's say, um, let's go to 20. Okay, that's going to be 0.1, but let's say I wanted to know UF at 20.05. Okay, this does just a linear interpolation there and gives me the values uh, between 0 and 40 for all U values with linear interpolation. Okay, so I needed that, and you'll see uh, where I need it um, later. Okay, so let's go ahead and just keep stepping through this. Okay, so the, the next thing that I want to do is just go ahead and simulate my uh, higher order process. So we're going to try to fit uh, to this right here. This is the generating this black line right here. Okay, so that's my higher order process, my process data. If I have process data, I can just remove uh, this section. Now the next section is where I'm actually going to, um, you know, create my uh, this model simulation. And the optimizer is going to do a lot of guesses for this x value, the km, the tau m, and the theta m. It's going to guess these and want to plug it in and just get a response y. Okay, so it's going to do a lot of kind of guess and check intelligently. Um, the first guess that I gave it was this blue line right here. So if I plugged in those three values, the three initial values there, it would just give me this blue line, and then as it iterates, it's going to find something better and better until it finds the red line. Okay, but this function right here, what it does is you plug in the three parameters, and it returns the response. Okay, it just goes through this loop for all the time points that you had specified. The next one that we have to um, uh, create is to define our objective. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and run down to um, this point. Okay, so here is my objective, um, and uh, what what it's going to do is um, 
It's going to come in for different, you know, km, tau-m, and theta-m. Okay, those are my model uh, parameters. And it's going to, first of all, simulate the model with those um, x values, okay? And then return this y model. And then what it'll do is just calculate my objective. So it'll go through each of these points and just sum up um, the objective values by adding um, up the difference between the model and the predicted value squared. Okay, so I set objective equal to zero, put it in this loop for all the different time points uh, for the length of ym, and basically just do a sum of squared errors right here. Okay, so um, those are all of my functions. Now it's uh, now I'm going to get down to the part where I'm going to start calling those, and I'll show you how to set up uh, the optimization. Okay, so I have the initial guesses. Um, x naught. I'm just going to say that uh, give it a, a blank or zeros of, of, of dimension three, and then my very first one is going to be my initial guess for km, which is three. My tau m, which is my initial guess for uh, tau, and then uh, one, which is my initial guess for the dead time. Okay, and then um, what I I did, and you saw this when it ran, is it is going to go ahead and just print out. It's going to evaluate the sum of squared errors just with that initial guess. And, um, and then just print out the uh, initial sum of squared errors objective. Okay, so it's going to evaluate um, uh, that line, and it should have printed it out. I think it, just because it's in debug mode, it prints out some other stuff as well. But there's my initial sum of squared errors objective. Okay, and then uh, the next step is now where I'm actually going to minimize this. So I've given it my objective function. Uh, name there. That's my my uh, function that I defined. Okay, which is going to call. It's going to call this one over and over again. And I also gave it some initial guesses here. These these were my initial guesses to those three parameters. And it's going to try to minimize this objective with the, given the initial guess, and then it'll return a, a a solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and step through this now. This one will take just a little bit of time. Uh, to finish, as it's uh, guessing, it's probably doing it, you know, a couple, uh, quite a few times, um, as it's trying to intelligently guess uh, the solution. And then once it finishes, we'll get to another uh, command prompt. Okay, and um, let me go ahead and just print uh, solution, see if it's done here. So it's not quite done. When it finishes, then I'll get a solution back, and I'll show you what um, you know some of the things that the solver is returning here. Okay, so I think it's still going. Um, maybe because I'm in debug mode, it might be going um, just a little bit slower. I'm not sure. Okay, let me go ahead and check. Okay, yeah, Python's still working on it. You can see uh, the CPU there. Um, that it's um, you know working on uh, calculating this solution. Okay, and then um, let me just go ahead and uh, step through the rest of this uh, just as we're finishing, you know, letting it finish calculate this. Uh, so the next step that it's going to do is just go ahead and return the x value. Um, and we'll get that with solution dot x, and then what I'll do is just plug that in, um, and uh, you know. Uh, evaluate the objective at that, uh, you know, the final value versus the x naught value, and then um, what I'm going to do then is um, just plot. Okay, so it's going to plot after that point, and uh, you know, and then I can uh, show the results. Okay, so here are the plots down below. Okay, so let me see if I can print this again. It looks like it just finished. Okay, so here is the uh, Okay, so a little bit of information. Uh, when I print the solution, I have my uh, my uh, objective. Okay, that's the final objective. It had to do uh, you know quite a few evaluations. It had eleven iteration, number of function evaluations. It tried to do this guess and check three hundred and twenty five different times. Um, it had number of uh, Jacobian evaluations. That's the first derivative. It had to do that sixty three times. And then here is my gain, my uh, time constant, and my dead time. Okay, so those three things were returned. And then um, what I'm going to do now is um, 
just keep, continue stepping through this and then print the final objective. Okay, and so there you can see the final uh, sum of squared errors objective is right there. It also returned it um, with the uh, optimizer. Okay, so I'm going to evaluate the initial conditions. I'm going to put that into YM1, the final conditions, YM2, and then let's just go ahead and start plotting this. Okay, we're going to plot uh, the initial, the final, and then the actual, and also the U values, and then we'll show it. Okay, so um, there we are. Let me scroll up just a little bit. Okay, so there is, um, there it is right there. Okay, so this is uh, this was the optimization method uh, to getting a, an FOPDT model, and it um, again it works in in many cases uh, where you know where the graphical method might not work, or where you want to have something that's just a little bit more precise than uh, the graphical method. Okay, and the next step beyond this is going to be obtaining PID tuning parameters. So we use these three values. Um, and then if you come down here to the controller design, for example, you know, PI uh, controller. Um, well, let me see if I can refresh this here. Okay, so here is the, um, the PI controller uh, right here, and we're going to have some tuning rules. Okay, so like IMC tuning correlations, we're going to use those KP, tau P, and theta P to come up with good KC, tau I and uh, potentially tau d, those are going to be our PID controller uh, tuning parameters.